Hello and welcome to a UX Pin tutorial. In this video, we're going to explore the user interface of the core function in UX Pin, the editor. Follow along and learn what you can do here in the UX Pin editor. On the left panel, you'll see options for rectangle, oval shape, line, path, text element, image, icon, or hotspot to create interactions. If that's not enough, you could always go to the libraries to select from hundreds of pre-made elements. You could also create your own design system library, so definitely check out our separate tutorial for that. Click on the magnifying glass to search the entire UX pin library for assets, icons, or pre-built elements. Next, on our left toolbar, we have our variable feature, your pages, and layers. Your designs in UX pin are built on pages. Clicking on pages will show you your sitemap where you'll see all of your different pages. Your pages can be nested and reorganized here. To add a new page, simply click on the plus sign at the top corner. Your layers panel will show you all the layers on your specific page. Also, there's a search functionality within your layers, allowing you to search and filter. You can easily toggle visibility of your layers by hovering and clicking on the hide and show icon. As you can see, layers can be very useful for your design. Now let's focus on the top bar of the editor. On the left, we have our menu. You can navigate back to your dashboard with all of your projects, adjust your viewing options and preferences, review keyboard shortcuts, and see UXPIN's latest updates or log out of UXPIN. Next is the name of your prototype and sitemap, which works as a shortcut to add or go to pages. And there are two parts to the editor. We have our design and documentation mode. Currently we're in the design mode where you can draw and prototype. The documentation mode allows you to add supporting details to your design. You can also pin the documentation directly onto your element. The documentation will be visible in the preview mode so your stakeholders and collaborators can see them as well. Next is the zoom functionality. Hover over this to see options to zoom in or out. The icon to the right is for accessibility. The feature allows you to check the levels of contrast and color blindness. This can be helpful for creating accessible designs. Next is where you can preview your prototype. This next icon gives you sharing options. Simply copy the preview link and share it with your stakeholders and collaborators. There are options to share via email, SMS, and QR code. You can also export your design to PNG, PDF, or HTML. This icon here is for iterations. Iterations give you the option to manually save different phases of your prototype as different versions. That way you can compare your design ideas. This check indicates that all changes are automatically saved. Now let's focus on the properties panel. When none of the elements are selected on the canvas, the properties panel shows the specifications of the canvas. Let's briefly talk about the canvas. Right now, my canvas has a custom size width and height. If I remove the height, it will change to auto. The canvas is the viewport of my preview. My canvas width and my design has a width of 1440. You can see that it fits perfectly. Now, if I were to increase the canvas size to something wider, there's this empty space. I can change the color of my canvas, but it'll still be visible in my preview. The best practice is to set your canvas size based on the size of the device you're designing for. It's important to know that elements on the canvas will be visible, whereas elements outside the canvas will not be shown on preview. Now let's go over options where you select an element. Notice that the top bar and the property panels change once you select an element. At the top bar, you'll see the layer details such as the name of the element, and these icons here allow you to group your element, create a symbol, add a state, fill with data, add an interaction, or change the position of the layer. Let's go over the properties panel when an element is selected. The first thing you'll see is the option to add an interaction. Let's walk through the steps of adding an interaction. First, you'll need to select your trigger. You'll see that there are different categories for triggers. For this example, I'll stick with click. You can add conditions to your interaction, which are if and then statements. Next, you'll select your action. Click more to see the entire list of actions. For this example, I'll select Go To Page. Depending on your action, you'll be prompted to specify additional details. Here, I'll choose which page I want this interaction to take us. You can add animations to your page change and play around with the animation settings. 
then click Add to save your interaction. Your interaction and animation can be reviewed in preview. Okay, so back to the properties panel when you have an element selected. You can see your size and alignment of your element. You can also choose to make your element stick by clicking on this pin icon. There are also options to rotate and flip your element. The resizing option is resourceful when resizing groups. Use this option to lock your elements in the desired positions, for example, left or right corners, or the center. Below, you can adjust the radius of corners. Click the box to unlock and customize individual corners. You can also set the padding for text, play around with blending options, change colors, and add a stroke to all sides or just a select few. To remove the stroke property, just click the X. You can also add shadows, blur, and image fill. Another powerful feature is the area where you can add your own custom CSS properties. To conclude what we just went over, the editor is a heart of UX pin where you can design, prototype, add documentation, and collaborate with others. Your toolbar on the left equips you with everything you'll need to build your designs and prototypes. The top panel gives you a few options to manage your element and switch between designs and documentation mode. Lastly, the property panel is where you can change styling and add interactions. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next tutorial.